So guys, pleasure to talk to you today. I'm the product manager for Chrome Browser and Chromebooks in business, and I'll try to touch on a few guiding product philosophies and technology philosophies that we have. Um, a couple of weekends ago, I was reading an article on evolution, actually. And one thing that truly separated humans, it seems, around four million years ago in our evolutionary path as opposed to other species was our ability to build tools. So it turns out many other species are not able to look at how they do hunting or other activities and build tools to improve that process over time. And what we have been doing over millions of years is building better and better tools and getting more and more efficient at those activities. So a few million years ago, when there were folks who were building those metal spears, building those tools was helping you know, in a macroeconomic concept, it was helping each particular, the entire humanity, get better at food security. And it was helping one tribe be more successful than the other tribe. If you look at it today, the roles that IT has in an organization is, is remarkably similar. You guys, and IT within Google as well, provides those critical tools to your employees in whatever way they contribute value to society. And the tool that you give them essentially separates them out also from other competitors in how fast and how efficiently they can do that. So you know, it was a good realization to see that the role that you guys have today, especially with the speed that was being talked about earlier, I think it was Martin's slide which talked about how fast now a company gets to be in the S&P 500 space. So in a way, this is a, one of my favorite quotes from Mario Andretti, he's the driver of the century. Um, he said that if everything is under control, you're not going fast enough. And, and that's truly an indicator of things in our time. If, if everything is truly in control, that's no longer just the mission of IT in an organization. If you aren't giving your employees the fastest, most efficient tools, you are gonna be left behind. And if truly speed does matter to you, the partner that you should have is a company that values speed at its core. Right from the founding days of Google, speed has been one of the most important principles that we have had. Right from the search days, you might remember in the early days, we used to actually display how many seconds it takes us to give you those search results. And that philosophy still exists with us today. Many of you may have led, led software projects either in their development or in their quality assurance or their introduction to your organizations. I have certainly led my share of them. And usually what happens is your first version comes out, it's pretty focused, it has three, four features, does them really well, and over time it gets bloated, right? Multiple designers join in, multiple testers join in, and over time, with peripheral features, slowly that software starts getting slow. I'll ask you from your experience, when have you seen that after years of software development, actually a product got faster. One thing, the first comparison between um, the PC that may be, you may be using. So if it takes your device roughly three minutes, 30 seconds to boot every time that it boots up, compare that with a Chromebook that takes less than 10 seconds. I'm being con conservative here. My personal experience is less than eight, actually. Now you may think, well, three minutes, 10 seconds, does that really matter? Think about it, 10,000 employees, above three minutes of boot time every day, that's 500 man hours. That's sometimes the entire lifetime of a project within Google. You know, one new feature can be done within 500 hours. So every day at 100 bucks an hour, it's, it's half a million dollars of co company money that's, that could have been utilized for creating value. And that's just the boot up time. Imagine the antivirus updates. Imagine the next time you have to do an OS update that takes six months. That's real money, guys. That's stuff that your competitors are perhaps using for something else. And again, another example of speed. You know, uh, right now, I, I just read that from all the trading that happens in US, stock trading, 70% is machines. It's not humans that are trading, it's actually machines. And that nanosecond difference that one bank or one trading agency gains over the other does make a difference. So again, if speed matters, it should be a platform that is fast at its core. This is a chart of Chrome's evolution. I'm starting at Chrome 15 when we uh, started measuring these speeds on Octane. This is the speed of the core JavaScript engine that Chrome has. Over the last one and a half years, that's what this graph shows and it continues we have grown in speed of 45%. So the earlier analogy I was giving you that over time software gets bloated, gets slower. We have actually gotten faster. And this doesn't happen by chance. This is by very strong discipline. 
So as a product manager, you know, every six weeks or so, I try to get a feature across, you know, listening to your feedback, whatever I hear from enterprise, I try to get features launched. Similarly, there are other products that try to get their features launched. But nobody gets to launch their feature if they made the product slower. So you could have been the founder of Google Apps, you could have been the most senior product manager at Google, but if you make this product slower, you will not get to launch your feature. And that's the discipline that over time keeps this product fast, regardless of how many engineers join in, regardless of how many releases we make of this product. And that's why if speed matters, if change is happening faster, and if your employees need to have the fastest tool, you can be sure that ten, five years from now, regardless of how many features we add to this, this is still gonna be the, one of the fastest platforms. So, along with speed, one thing we deeply care about is where the web is moving. You might have heard about HTML5 being the cross-platform method of building apps. We are at the forefront of HTML5 compliance. So all the way from 2009 until now, you can see that Chrome has always led in the amount of HTML5 compliance. And this is not our, uh, the source here is HTML5test.com. So whenever you're back, you can fire up your browsers, the ones that you have, try it out. And you will see that actually Chrome on mobile has a better HTML5 compliance than some of the desktop browsers out there. So try this out, and, and this, this, this brings some value to us. So one example of this is SAP, pretty tr traditional enterprise software company. I'm sure many of you guys use this. So we have been in engagement with SAP for over a couple of years now. This was the announcement from last year when they did a redesign of their UI, right? As you, probably you don't associate this with the traditional SAP UI you might have used in your companies more than a year ago. So what Samian is saying is that SAP Fury relies on HTML5 and that the browser that they could rely on across platform, mobile, desktop, and Chromebooks, was Chrome. And, and this is some of the screenshots that you're seeing. And part of the reason they collaborate with us is because we are committed to HTML5's compliance and we'll keep it at the forefront. Citrix is an announcement we made earlier this year. So this is for some of your legacy apps that you truly rely on that perhaps have not made yet a transition to the web. You can use Citrix on Chromebooks and we're collaborating with them to make the experience the best we can. Uh, I'll give the best example that I can give with you here is a video of Woolworths, one of the largest re retail chains in Australia, on how they have made a transformation with Chromebooks and Citrix. The video. Woolworths is a number of different banners, and so it's made up of 195,000 people and growing um, across 3,000 different stores, both here in Australia and New Zealand. Staff were coming from current technology in their home environment and moving back 10 years when they came to work with technology here in Woolworths. And we have progressively changed that over time with the introduction of this new environment. It takes the power of both Google in combination with Citrix. Um, when you bring those two environments together, then, then you get that outcome. Um, that's not something that we've seen previously in the market. We'll have 10,000 users that will be running on the Citrix and App environment. A good deal of those will be running on uh, Chrome book style devices. Now that we have the Apps Plus as well to support that, we're in a very, very good position. And I think that on the whole, it's been taken up very, very well. It was very much about uh, how you execute the change and, and how you bring users on that journey as we transition from uh, a very well known and understood Windows environment across to a new set of capabilities and technology that would ultimately make them more productive. We went about uh, delivering all of our applications through a web browser. And some key things underneath that that we wanted to achieve were remove the very manual and intensive desktop computer, and we did that by replacing it with Chrome devices. What was previously a significant desktop management or deployment activity to get Windows onto a new staff or new user's desktop has effectively turned into an activity that takes minutes and is far simpler than what we've previously had. So an organization of above 190,000 employees, very distributed workforce, that's where we can excel at as well. So the speed and security came built in. What we are working together with Citrix is also to improve the user experience. So the users should not be able to even distinguish whether the app is really running on their device or on the web or through the Citrix environment. We really, really want to make it seamless. 
We had a similar announcement with VMware, pretty much the similar uh, philosophy. We want to engage with them to make it as seamless as possible for the user. Also on the collaboration front, we know that some of you do use Cisco WebEx. So recently at Cisco Enterprise Connect, you guys might have heard the announcement. WebEx is gonna to come to Chromebooks. We're working with Cisco to in enhance that partnership. This is a screenshot from a prototype that we had working actually with them. And this is uh, Citrix GoToMeeting. Uh, and you can see that they have launched something called free.gotomeeting.com. You guys can try it out. And here it says GoToMeeting free is available exclusively on Chrome. Now believe me, this is not part of our design. It's not Mark and Mike or the BizDev team or me who went and told Citrix, hey guys, you gotta do it exclusively on Chrome. They chose it simply because of that earlier HTML5 graph that you saw, because we are committed to HTML5 and WebRTC technologies, and we truly try to push the standard forward. So they simply found it easiest to have this working on Chrome. So all of these collaboration technologies are also coming to Chrome. Another feature I want to talk to you about is actually shareability. So Chromebooks, from day one, whoever logs in, their data is completely separately encrypted and can never be mixed with each other, even with targeted attacks. So to, actually, this is a Chromebook. So when I flew in from Munich here, you might see this label here, what it says it's Tech Stop London. So I actually didn't travel here with my laptop. I, didn't, I don't travel at all these days back to home or to office with a laptop. I just come in, I went to the Tech Stop here, I said, hey guys, I need a Chromebook. Picked it up, logged in, this presentation, I actually built it on this loaner device. So shareability is as well built into this device. So you can imagine a mobile worker, you, you, know, you could take an entire fleet of 1,000 trucks and have, equip each of them with a Chromebook. They, don't have to, they will be personalized the moment your driver logs into it. You don't have to assign devices per individual anymore. Lastly, Few things that we have been, that has been keeping us busy, the engineering team busy and the product team busy. So one thing we have been working on is ephemeral mode. So what we want to do is you log into a Chrome browser on, on some device, probably not your own or your regular device, and when you sign out or when you close the device, whatever you had in that session gets wiped off. So this could be useful when you are logging in from a shared device or logging in temporarily while you're visiting some place. So what we want to make sure is that we'll give you temporary access to your corp resources, but when you close that browser, everything is wiped up on that device. So that can be a, you know, somewhat of a data security feature. Single sign-on is something we're trying to solve now. You'll be like, single sign-on, that's, that's pretty easy stuff, right? But you know, this device has been built with hardware-based cryptography in mind. So we're, what we're trying to do is how do we work with traditional single sign-on systems, still keep the security model intact, and allow logging in with existing Active Directory installs or any other form of identity systems that you have. Last thing, certificate management is something that I deeply care about. Because you know, folks sometimes secure these Wi-Fi access points with certificates, but then they send the private key over an email. Right? So, so sometimes security is lost by certain small aspects as that. What we're trying to solve is how in a 10,000, 20,000 Chromebook deployment can we get the certificates installed in a secure manner so when you get these Chromebooks to your users, they open it up, fully secure manner, they're able to connect to your Wi-Fi access points. So that's a problem we're trying to solve as well. Few of the policies we talked about, we really get a lot of positive feedback around this. Because if you are managing a large deployment of users and Chromebooks, it's really important that when they open the, imagine when they open the Chromebook, the network is set up, the printers are set up, the apps that they use there are set up. For example, that Citrix deployment. Company Citrix deployments often have a URL which says anycast.citrix.internal.companyname.com slash 3456 port number something. Imagine the time wasted when 5,000 of your employees have to discover that URL. Why should they have to discover that URL? Why can't it be one of these policies that pushes that to them? And that's what we have tried to solve. Lastly, uh, one thing that we're really trying to do is Chrome on all platforms should deliver the same experience. So I'm happy to announce to you that we have a limited preview of policies, all those policies that you looked at. They don't just apply on Chromebooks. They apply on Chrome Desktop and now Chrome Mobile as well. So if you would be willing to try that out, please reach out to your account representative or contact, and we'll be happy to enable Chrome Mobile, the same set of policies to work for you. Lastly, to conclude, so speed has been a core factor. We'll keep loyal to that. Security, 
that you'll find very few vendors who make this, such a device at such a price point, but still are committed to building in a TPM within the device for hardware security. It's simple, you can manage those 120 policies really easy, and finally, it'll be shareable across your employees. Thank you.